Alright, uh, thank you guys for coming tonight. Um, as you guys can see, my brother-in-law Gary and Jay, they're here to do the box seminar for you guys. So hopefully you'll have some fun, you'll learn a lot. Both of these guys are awesome and great guys. And uh, I'm going to turn it all over to them. So they can do whatever they want to you guys. And uh, we'll have to see how it goes, alright? Thank you. All right, um, so just to let you guys know what we do, who we are, um, I've been fighting since I was 17, I'm 29, so about 12 years. Uh, boxed for seven years straight, then I went to MMA, I did MMA. I had a lot of amateur fights in both boxing and MMA. I do jiu-jitsu now, I've been doing jiu-jitsu forever. But I started training uh, boxers, so I do more of the strength and conditioning for the fighters, but I do a lot of reaction drills, that kind of stuff. Jay had, me and Jay used to box together back in the day. Jay is now a professional fighter. He's two-time Golden Gloves champion uh, for New Jersey, and he recently just had his first professional fight. So I'm more of his strength and conditioning coach and with his reaction drills, which is stuff I'm going to show you today that I do with him specifically because I don't do his boxing technique, but that's what I specialize in. He just has another coach. So first, we're just going to warm you guys up before, and then we're going to kind of see what you do already just so I have an idea, but I have a whole bunch of stuff we're going to do today. So just to warm up, we're going to start just running around in a circle, just kind of jog. To loosen up, and then I'm gonna call certain things out while you're running. Here's the first thing we're gonna work on. Everybody, just take it real quick, so we can. Uh, so, at any time, if you guys have a question, don't just raise your hand. And ask, it's fine. So I know you guys do more of the tie stance. That's a big MMA thing. That's great. That's awesome. We are ties like this. You're square. We in boxing, we don't do that. So Jay and me are fighting. I don't fight Jay like this because in boxing, all I have to worry about are punches. And when you're fighting, especially like Krav, MMA, there's kicks, there's clinches, there's none of that in boxing, it's just hands. So if I'm here, and I'm, especially me being a shorter fighter, Dave, throw out your left hand. You see how far away my hand is if I'm square? In boxing, we're angled. Now look how much closer my hand is to him. And where he's still hitting me, but now I can actually touch him. When I'm square, I can't. So there's a big difference in boxing. We're not going to focus on that right now. But the number one thing is we always throw our punches long, even when we shadow box. So whether you're in a tie stance or a boxing stance, when you shadow box, I don't want short punches. Because if you train throwing short punches, when you fight, you're going to throw short punches. So Jade is going to just shadow box real quick so you guys can see how he extends every punch he throws. Whether you're in a tie stance or a boxing stance, doesn't matter. But everything he throws is long. You turn your thumb to get the extension. Boxing or tie, turn your thumb. Turn to fully extend. The other thing is, watch real quick, Jay, throw the jab and hold it. Look at his shoulder. Where's his chin? It's tucked. When you shorten up the punches, you're not defending. So a great way to defend is to do the offense correctly. If you do the offense, even if I'm in a tie stance, and I, you watch me from the side, boxing here, Tie. It's the same thing. My shoulder is defending. When I throw the cross, here, it's the same thing. Boxing or tie, it doesn't matter. My shoulder is blocking my chin. My chin is tucked. Every punch that I throw, my shoulder is here. So that if I get, if I throw a cross and Jay hooks at the same time, he's going to, if you hit me here, he's going to either hit my shoulder or the top of my head, not my chin. I'd rather get hit here than here, right? My chin, I get hit, especially with bare fist, I'm gonna go out, that's it. But if I get hit here, I have a chance. So, one more time, shadow box. Look at the extension of his punches. He, all he's doing is turning his thumbs to get the extension, and watch how his shoulder naturally comes up. So, the jab cross. Again. Good, time. So, I want you guys, we're gonna shadow box again, focus on getting the full extension, okay? Let's come up, let's try it. Focus on the full extension. It doesn't have to be fast, you just have to fully extend, okay? Go ahead. Time. Okay, good. So now, the next thing we're going to work on is movement. Why do you shadow box? So real quick, I say just move like you shadow box like a normal Watch how much Jade moves. Now remember, when we're fighting, we're, we're fighting someone who's also fighting us. They're moving. So Jade fights as if he's actually fighting someone. He's moving a lot, right? There's always movement. Whether it's Thai, whether it's boxing, MMA, you want to move. Probably going to focus more on self-defense, but if I move like this when I'm fighting someone who, no matter where I am, in the ring or in the street, I'm going to have the better chance. He's going to have better defense just because he's moving. He's harder to hit. You guys can all take turns moving with him. You'll see he's very hard to hit because he moves so much. 
Right, so we're gonna do a movement drill. You're gonna partner up, me and Jade are gonna do the drill. This is a very easy drill. You're gonna play follow the leader. One person leads. So real quick, take a knee just so you can watch a little better. Me and Jay, I'm the leader first. We're gonna work on our distance. This is my distance. Right from here, I can hit Jay, I can touch him. So I wanna be this close. So if I step in, Jay steps back. And I have to keep coming in, or if I start moving back, he moves back because he wants his distance. We're gonna work just being within our reach. So I'm the leader, I'm gonna move however I wanna move. Normally in boxing we do rhythm. You guys don't have to do that, just practice the movement, okay? So I'm gonna move in, he follows, I move back, he follows. If I start turning, he turns, he turns. Because if I start moving and he stays still, stay still. And I start moving, I got a whole bunch of stuff because he's just staying there. What's he gonna do? He's naturally gonna move so that I don't have that, right? So all you're gonna do is move with each other slow, not crazy, don't go crazy and stuff. Just practice your distance and practice moving, however you wanna move. Follow the leader, I'm the leader, Jay follows. If I go back, if I start turning, that's it. That's all we're gonna do. So find a partner and let's start moving around, okay? Whoever wants to lead first, goes first. It doesn't matter who your partner is because you're gonna switch, okay? And time. Good job, guys. Okay, everybody take a knee real quick. So, did you guys notice that depending on your partner, it was different, right? Everybody moves different. Some people are a lot tighter, some people move a lot. So, it's the same thing whenever you fight, whether you're in a ring or in the street. No one's the same, everyone's different. So, the thing is with the movement, again, is you gotta learn how to move to fight whoever it is that you're fighting. So, that's how we do these kind of drills. Now, we're gonna change the drill. So, now me and Dave are gonna move. So, now, it's great following the leader, you get to learn the basics. But when you're fighting, there's no leader. I don't want to win. So I'm going to move it. So does he. He wants to win too. So now the drill is you're going to move however you want. Okay? The goal is, again, to keep the distance. But every now and then, it's like we're going to play almost like we're playing tag. Okay? So if I get like real close on him, if I like fake, maybe I'm moving back and he's following and then I come in real quick. Do you see how he reacts quick? So we're almost like playing tag the whole time. We're not actually touching each other, but we're moving like we're really fighting. So my goal is to try to get like angles on him. In boxing, it's all about angles. Because again, like I said before, we fight like this. So in boxing, if I get him, if we're angled, and I can move and get him square, I have the body shots all day. So that's what I want to do as a boxer. But whatever it is that you guys think of a move that you like to do during your class, right? Maybe I'm thinking about setting up a kick. So I'm going to make him move this way and then throw the kick. Or maybe I want to make him step this way so I can catch a kick. So you think about these things in your head while you make the person move. You're not going to actually hit each other. But that when you spar, that's what, how you should think. If I have really good movement and I can pressure him into a corner, I'm an infighter. So I like getting guys, especially because Jay's so tall, I want him in the ring. I don't want, I don't want to fight, box him. His arms are way too long for me to box. So I want to come in here to work because I'm shorter than him. So that would be my goal as a fighter. Jay wants to keep me away so he would move a lot more than I would, right? So you're going to move with, with a partner. You can pick the same partner or a different one. You're going to switch again. But now it's no leader. Now you just move like you're fighting, okay? So pick a partner and then we're going to just move, okay? You guys just moved around like you were fighting, right? And in your mind, you were thinking about all the things that you would have done if they moved like this. That's shadow boxing. When I shadow box, the day shadow boxing, I'm imagining someone's in front of me. So I'm not just standing still because I don't fight standing still. I move. So uh, me and Jay shadow box very differently because we have different styles. So we're both just going to shadow box and just watch what we do, okay? Okay, so when we shadow box, we're fighting, right? So that's what I want you guys to do now. Imagine you're still moving around with the other person, like where you were before when it was like live, and shadow box. Move, do your movements, throw your punches, throw your kicks, like as if you were fighting somebody, okay? So let's go, everybody pick a spot. Ready? And go. Think of when you spar. You're sparring right now with somebody who's in front of you. 
Keep those hands up. Throw some combos. Do some defense too. Throw that defense in there. When you fight, you have to defend too. Mix it up. Okay, guys, take me real quick. So, we use the noodles a lot because one, they don't hurt. So if I hit G really hard, it doesn't matter. You don't feel a thing, okay? <laughs> But it's good to train, to train the reaction because I can be very fast with the noodles and it's good for him for defense. So right now what you're going to do is the same movement that we did before because we try to keep the training as realistic as possible. So I'm going to move around with Jade and we're going to just practice basic defense. So for us, the boxing, when we block, usually like if we were to block hooks, okay? It's more just like a great and great speed of block. You're just really raising upward. Uh, you guys might block differently and that's fine. Just do whatever blocks you want to do. If it's an hour block or if it's just like a tight block. But you're going to practice with your partner. First you start easy. As you get better, you pick it up. So you start easy, you move. And then you pick it up a little bit. So move around with your partner. When I tell you to, you'll just switch the noodles. Start light, I'll tell you when to pick it up. Start light, practice, get used to it first, and then pick it up. And aim for their head. It doesn't hurt, it's okay. All right? because then I want to learn too, right? So we still want to be as technical as we can. I don't want to just fail on him like crazy. So now we're going to work sitting under, okay? There's two different ways we do it. One is just during movement, another one is after a combo. So we're going to do the movement first. I make, I make it very obvious which way I want him to go. We're going to move. Maybe I'll still do a little bit of blocking. And every now and then when I want him to sit under one way, I'm going to make it obvious. I'm going to swing very wide. Sit underneath, okay? Move. It's nice and easy. I just want him to practice the movement. So we go very wide on purpose. You duck under just because I want him to practice the movement. And you still. Throw in a couple of little light touches because I want him to stay sharp, okay? So now with your partner, nice and easy, let's practice sitting under while you're moving around, okay? Keep your hands up. If you're the noodle holder, remember, it's your job to get your partner to be sharp. It's your job to make them work, so don't be, don't be slow. Make sure you pay attention. If you see them dropping their hands, call them out. But hit them with the noodle. That's what the noodles are for, okay? Go ahead. So make sure again when we're sitting, we want we want the we want your partner to work. So don't I'm not gonna look, I'm all the way up here. He's tall enough. I don't you know he's not even sitting at this point. Make them sit when you want them to sit. Okay, go low. So if I'm moving, I just want him to move and sit. I'm gonna put it. Look, I make him sit. I make him sit. I'm not going up here. He doesn't even really. He might sit, but he doesn't even have to because I'm holding it too high. So don't. And the other thing is. I want him to actually sit, so I'm not swinging. I'm gonna just, I keep it up and let him sit under, because I know I want him to know. So if I'm moving and we're just hitting a little bit, I keep it up and then I kind of just come in. I keep it like this and let him go, because I just want him to sit, okay? So now, go to the next part. We do it after punching. When you slip, a, lot of, a big part of sitting under is after you punch. It's a big thing. We want to duck punches. So what we're gonna do is, the partner is going to throw a jab cross. Ideally, you would hit the noodles with your gloves and stuff. If you want, you can try to hit the noodles with just your hands. It's fine. You might miss because it's a small target. But if you don't, just, you, know, you can just uh, play around with it. So we're going to do a very simple move. Jab, cross, and then sit. I swing at his head. If he does not 
sit, I'm going to hit him in the face. That's the point. Okay? So, don't sit. He has to sit, and I'm aiming at his face. The same way a punch would be, okay? So, so I'm still going to work a little bit. I'm up. I'm still going to move so that I want him to sit. Move. Combo. Combo. And I still make him work. Anytime you want to move, jab, cross, sit. I'm doing jab, cross, noodle holder. You swing with your left. Unless you have a lefty, you swing with your right. Okay? Because you want to, after the cross, whatever, if you're a lefty, your cross is your left hand, you're sitting to the left. If you're righty, you sit to the right for this, for this move. Okay? So let's work with your partner. Jab, cross, duck. Anytime you want them to do it, just say combo. Pop, pop, duck. Okay? Go ahead. Uh, just real quick, the reason why we do it's right bob, right? Thank you, Master Chris. Right bob is what we're doing, okay? And the reason why is because, again, we train for a purpose. So in boxing, a very big um, counter to a cross, especially if we're both righties, is the hook. So, uh, parry the cross. Uh, and then he would right here throw that hook. So even though my shoulder's up and I'm punching correctly, pop, pop, I'm going to get hit. So if I train to pop, 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 just do that, sometimes without even, I didn't even see the punch and I sit underneath. And it happens all the time. I can tell you from years of fighting, I've dodged many punches I've never even seen coming because I just pop, pop. And I sat like naturally just because we did it 100,000 times during training. So that's how we train certain combos. That's why we're doing specifically with the jab cross. From here, it's hard to go this way. My body, it's a, it's a very awkward movement for me to do because I'm here, I'm turned. A lot of my weight is on this leg, you see? When I'm here in my stance in boxing or in tie, here, here, I'm leaning forward. All the weight is here, so I can't really pick the split up to go that way. But this leg is light, so I can sit and go that way. And I'm just getting out of the way, okay? The only punch he can really throw if I go that way is a hook. That's it. He can throw a body shot, but I'm going to stuff it. If I'm moving this way and he throws across, it doesn't matter. I'm moving out of the way, regardless. But the only thing he can really hit me with is the hook. If I throw here and try to go this way, he can still hit me with that hook. With the hook. I can still get hit all day with that hook. Even if he goes with anything to the left side. If I go to the right, after a cross, for the counter, anything, whether it's a body shot, a hook, whatever, if I go this way, I'll either stop it or I'll duck underneath, okay? Which is why we do that. So now, we're going to train the opposite. You're going to do jab, cross, hook, left bob, okay? So, with the noodles, if you miss the hook, it's a little hard to hit the noodle without a glove with uh, the hook, but jab, cross, hook, and then you're going to sit to the left right after. Okay, from here, pop, 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 pop. And I'm still moving a little bit. I still, if I want him to sit, I'm going to do that, okay? But that's the combo now. Jab, cross, hook, left bob, okay? Left bob, always, all right? Let's go. Do your partner. Okay, when we slip in boxing, we, do, we slip very, very slightly because remember, even when you're, it doesn't really matter what sport you're fighting. He only has to get out of the way of a punch, which is coming at him. So it, ideally a glove. So imagine my fist. He doesn't need to move. Move like a lot. He doesn't need to move that much. My fist isn't that big. So he moves. That's too much movement. Okay? But if... Just slip a little bit. So you see it's a very slight movement because he only has to get out of the way of like my fist or, or a glove. It doesn't have to be a drastic thing. So what we're going to do with the noodles, we practice the slipping. With my left, I'm going to hit, and he's going to slip to his right, like this, to the right. With my right, he slips to the left, OK? So we do two in a row, OK? We start with the left first, or you can start with the right first. You talk it over with your partner. Don't just hit. Let them know what you're doing so that they can practice, OK? So me and Dave are going to do left, right first. Now we'll do like four, well maybe let's do six. Six of them. And 
and it's just for him to learn to react quickly. Obviously, nobody punches downward like this, but it's for him to learn the speed, to learn how to move like that and be very hard to hit. If you're fighting somebody who's moving like this constantly, they're very hard to hit. They are, because he slips very well, and especially if he slips correctly. If he's not doing very, do it like, uh, go really wide. You see? Do it again. If I go fast, do it wide. Okay. <laughs> do it wide. You see how much I'm, I'm like hitting him? Because it's too much. We don't need that much. So very light. Okay? Just like that. And then we still add everything else in. We're still going to add in the blocking, okay, the sitting. So for right now, just focus on this hitting to the side. And whenever you want your partner to slip, whatever number you decide, let's say four, okay? We're going to move. He's going to do four when I tell him. Four. Okay? So call it out so that they know it's coming, but then still add in the side blocks a little bit, okay? Go ahead, we're your partner. Hey guys, take a knee real quick. Just watch me and Dave. So now we want to put everything together. This is all part of like, you come up with any combos you want, realistically, and you want to be able to do whatever it is at any time. So no matter what combination of things I want to put together, you should be able to do them correctly if you practice your technique properly, right? So we're going to do uh, the slipping. We're going to add a right bob and then a cross or cross combo, okay? So it goes, we're going to do it really slow. So he's going to slip four times. One, two, three, four. Right from here, I throw and he's going to duck. Right bob and then cross, hook, cross, okay? So we're going to move. I'll do it slow again. Four slips. One, two, three, four. Right bob, cross, hook, cross. And then we still can do all the other things we were doing. That's just the combo. So we're going to move a little bit. Combo. Combo. So I try to, me being the noodle holder, we want them to work the combo, but right after, we want to be more realistic. I'm not, I'm not going to just stand there like punching. I'm punching back. So after he does the combo, he finishes the cross, so cross, I'm coming and I'm moving the same way somebody else would who's fighting him. That's what your job is as the noodle holder, okay? So again, the combo, one more time, we'll do it really slow. Four slips. One, two, three, four. Right from there, the right bob, cross, hook, cross. Okay, one more time fast. Okay, let's try it. As you get better, you'll look just like Jay. Oh, wrong. yeah. <laughs> Everybody take a knee real quick. Take a knee. So, just to show you guys a different way to put it together, okay? Now me and Jay are going to move together. We're going to just change up the combo so you can see. It's just you, there's endless amounts of combos that you can do with this, okay? So, we're going to do jab, jab, cross first. We're going to do jab, jab, cross. Right from there, just go. Right from there, we're gonna do right bob, left bob, right bob. Three in a row, okay? So, we'll do it slow. Jab, jab, cross, right, left, right. Right from there, we're gonna do cross, hook, cross, okay? So, we do it again. Jab, 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 cross, right, left, right, cross, hook, cross, again. So it's just a different way to put it together. Now. Remember, as the noodle holder, I can't just stand here like this. Jab, jab, cross. Do the two jab. You see how the noodles like bend all like this? This is no good. I have to like touch the punches. So make sure you're moving, okay? You guys got to get good as noodle holders too, not just like moving and fighting. I got to get good at being a pad holder for my partner so that they can in turn do it for me, right? So we'll do it one more time slow. Jab, jab, cross. Right, left, right. Cross, hook, cross. And notice when he bobs, watch it. Uh, just do the bob by yourself. Do right, up, right. Look at his feet. He's sitting to the side. Even though his feet aren't moving that much, he's still stepping and moving because he's ducking because I'm throwing punches. But what if I only threw two? He doesn't need to do three bobs, right? So if I only threw two, pop, pop. He's ready to stay here. All right? So step, step, step. Look, my feet kind of stay in place. Pop, pop. Uh, but I'm still stepping and ready to go if I have to, okay? So
So just keep that in mind. So again, one more time, slow. Jab, jab, cross. Left, I mean right, left, right. Cross, hook, cross. Okay? Let's try it. See how fast the game moves and stuff? This guy's I do it with him all the time, so he's used to it. But it's supposed to be like that. It's just to keep you sharp, to keep you like on your toes. But the most, the best way to do it is with gloves, because that's what's gonna happen, right? You're fighting, right? So we're gonna just do two simple drills that we like to do to get you to react better. So one is always the movement. We're always moving, right? So me and Dave are gonna move around. We're just gonna just move. Okay. We're just gonna move like we're fighting, because that's what we're doing in real life, right? In reality, we're boxers, we're gonna fight. You guys just do crowd, but if, again, movement is gonna give you the advantage all the time. So we're moving, and we're gonna practice two different ways to block a jab. That's very basic, okay? So the first one is a sit block. First, all I do is I'm here, oh, one more time, one second. All I do is when I'm here, I don't wanna block like this, because I can't see you guys. And I, I can't really punch back from here because I, I want to be like this so I can turn. I can't punch good from this position. So when I see the punch coming, I sit behind my gloves. And you see I can see through, right? I can see. So I'm here, Jane's going to throw the punch, and I sit. I sit with my back leg, whether I'm in a boxing stance or in a tie stance. I sit on the back leg. And I just pick my hands up a little bit so that I can block the punch coming at my face, okay? So we're gonna do it very slow. This is like a simulated sparring thing. Very lightly, if you're the person punching, do not beat the hell out of your partner. You're practicing just this block, okay? So we're moving. Uh, whatever you want to say. Now this is a very good block because from there one, I can see it's good for me to get his timing. So if I wanted to counter with something, so like say I wanted to come over with an overhand right, and I need to get his timing first. I got it. I got the timing because I sat behind and watched it. I timed it. Okay, so that's why this is a very basic and good block. I can do anything I want from there. I can, if I want, come back with a jab of my own or a body shot. So um, jab. I can come right back from this position because my back leg is bent so I can push off and come in with a punch, okay? So, one more time. All you're gonna do is one person's gonna jab very lightly at your partner. Aim at the face, but don't try to really hurt them. You're trying to just let them work to the block, okay? All right, that's it. And then we switch, all right? Go ahead, one person starts. And then we switch it up. Make sure you're moving around. Move. Don't stay still. Time. Okay. Take it here real quick. So another one that we like to do is an inside block. Okay. We do a really quick inside block because for us, if you, the same way I like to come with the sit, I have to time it. What's a little quicker is if you inside block and then come back with the punch. It's a lot faster. So if I'm moving around with Jade, Jade is really good at the inside block. I'm better at the sit, so Dave's going to inside block, look at that. And then from there, uh, from there with the So it's really fast, you see how it's like pop, pop, and he's really quick with it. If I throw that jab, he's got the long arm, so especially fighting someone like me who's shorter, as soon as I throw that jab, he's going to come in right away. And it's a quick, it's almost like he threw a jab cross, it's that fast, so do a jab cross. Just throw the punch, jump across. Fast. Again. Again. So now watch the parry and the hook. It's the same thing. You see how quick it is? Or the inside block, rather. Sorry. So the inside, it's just as fast. It's as fast as the same, because he's doing the same motion. He's punching, he's blocking. It's the same thing. His shoulder's turning the same way. When we cross, look at my shoulder. My right shoulder, look. When I inside block, it's the same movement. So it's the hook is there. It's always there. That's why it's so fast, okay? So again, you don't have to hook. You're gonna inside block. I'm just showing you what that's why we do the inside block, so you can do something like that. All you're gonna do is inside block, no hook. That's it, inside block. Remember, you're just trying to get your partner to work. You're not trying to hurt them, okay? Let's go. 
Nice. Okay, take it knee real quick. So, you guys try to both blocks. So, think of whichever one you prefer. I, for me, I prefer the sit. That's because of the kind of my style of fighting. I'm an in-fighter, I like to go inside. Jay likes the inside blocks. He's a boxer. He likes that because then he can come back quick so how fast he is. So, he uses it to his advantage. So now, you guys are gonna jab, uh, it's kind of like free for all. So, we're gonna jab whenever we want. And you're gonna practice either one. You do whatever you wanna do. So this is like simulated sparring. It's very controlled. All we're doing is jabbing. We're not throwing any other punches. So I'm not gonna let my partner only throw jabs at me and then I blast him with the right hand. That's not fair. He didn't know that was coming. We're only practicing the jabs so that we can practice our blocking. And this is a really simple thing that we do to get comfortable with something like that, to block the jazz so we can eventually come back with counters, that kind of stuff. Okay, so we need to get a good move. But remember, you're not trying to hurt each other. You're just trying to make each other work. So we're not throwing super fast, hard jabs. We're just kind of moving and throwing lightly and letting the person work with whatever block they want to do, okay? Nice and easy. Don't try to hurt each other, okay? Let's move around. Let's try and get the block. Only the jab. And time. Good job, guys. Very nice. Everybody take a knee real quick. You're going to knee. Okay. So remember, guys, this is just to give you guys an idea of the kind of stuff we do to kind of like stay sharp and how we would do it to train for like a fight. This is stuff that's not just hitting the bags, hitting pads, hitting, you know, sparring. We do a lot of this kind of stuff that we did today because it helps keep us sharp. With the noodle, we first we work on movement. A lot of times we'll shadow box with each other or we'll just move around like we're actually fighting. And you see how if we throw punches but we're not actually hitting each other? Because movement is very, very important in boxing. And we're throwing punches because we got to make it realistic, but we're not hitting each other. We're shadow boxing. Even when we shadow box, you saw we showed you guys and you guys all did it, right? When you shadow box, we don't just stand still because nobody fights that way. We move when we shadow box. The same way I would move with Jade like we just did, and then the next round I'd come over here and work on my own and practice like as if I was still fighting him. That, it just helps to so see it mentally, right? Then with the noodles, it's basically just for reaction, for quick movement, pop, 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 move, move. So just react quickly so that when we do something like what you just did with the jab, you react quickly because we just did all those things. You move better and you react better with whatever it is that you're working. It doesn't have to just be a jab. It could be a combo, like a cross hook. It could be just a cross. It could be kicks. Whatever you want to do, you always, we work it in that way, okay? So that's all we have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the seminar. You guys did awesome. Thank you. So, all right, let's see you guys just stand up real quick. All right, I uh, hope you guys did have some fun with it. As you can tell, that it's, uh, boxing is part of our system, and it's always good to cross-train with everything. So we're going to go through all those movements. I really like those noodles, bro. So <laughs> yeah. definitely going to incorporate that. But uh, one more time, let's give it a hand for these guys. <laughs> we're going to keep it all the way, so we're going to cross our hands. We're going to bow to them, and we're going to bow. Keep up. Yeah. And let's shake it all the way down. Let's shake these guys' hands. Gives me love. Yeah, you move really good. You have good movement. Like I love boxing, so I always try not to.